Mike is back with us, so let me uh, let me bring up the PowerPoint, Mike. And okay, there we go. And we did the prelude kind of out of order. You still want to Bible verse of the week? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Uh, uh, Bible verse of the week is Rom 10 by 10. It's not our memory verse. Uh, let's read or read in English. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Uh, let's read this in, in, in uh, Chinese, Mandarin. Mandarin. Okay. This is our Bible verse of the week. And uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry for the interruptions because the internet was down. And, uh, so, okay. This, uh, today is uh, March 14. And uh, so we come together to worship. Okay. Let's get started now. Call to worship. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offering, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression? the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He has show, shown you, O oh mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Young 
千千家的公油吗？也是慢慢调调快油吗？我着为家己的罪恶欠我的大姐吗？为着我心内的罪恶欠我本身所生的吗？人啊，伊捌只是你啥物时候，也花爱你啥物。独独独爱你，也公义，心存怜悯，谦卑，甲你个上帝三甲行。那 our next will be the the praise to worship by Sumi, Sister Sumi. The first one to him to thirty two. What did I come to go to? What did I come to go to? He did not tell us. Don't do that to me, no. He did it all alone. What did I come to go to? Because我在心事，我我心中坚持着，也过不过。我就这样看啊，我就在这边看着，我要过去就过去。我今天过这棵树，就天涯过这棵树。天光树，小天天光树，我今来放这棵树，那秋那无助比，谁敢那好说不？那早那这么比。
is introduced by Sister Bime. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you to worship you and praise you. You are the almighty and everlasting God. We are thankful that we can come to your presence. And this is not because of our goodness or our righteous things we have done because our Lord Jesus Christ, Savior, who died for us on the cross and uh, shed his blood for our redemption and salvation. We confess our sins and we know that you are faithful and just and you will forgive our sins and make us righteousness. We pray for those who are hurting today. Give them an uplifting spirit. And we also want to thank you that our church as a whole, we are all, most of us are remain very healthy during this pandemic. We want to give thanks to you. Uh, you take care of us. And uh, our church uh, looking for a new pastor after Pastor Cowan's retirement. And so far, we are waiting for Pastor Chen's to, to respond to us within a week. You know, may your will be done. Uh, you know, what is our need? We need uh, you fire all us, all us up and uh, sort of keep us to be even in you and able to focus on you rather than in this world. 
we know how we are living in this world, but we are consecrated, we are holy in your sight. We pray for today's service that we can hear your words through Pastor Kong. Please speak through him, help him, enable to strengthen and up, enable him and strengthen him as he preach your word faithfully. We pray for our church members they are who are sick, who are not healthy, but give them strength, give them up, make them healthy in spirit. We know we are all kind of aged, but we really want to model Caleb and try to keep, to keep us healthy and able to do your mighty work through us. Lord, I especially want to pray for uh, Mr. Go Tianhui. Uh, he is suffering uh, serious illness. You know how they are. Uh, please be with him. Give him strength. Shine your light unto him. <laughs> and uh, so he can come uh, see you and able to uh, to meet you and able to come to our our fold. Lord, there are many, many uh, requests in the bulletins. You know all our requests. And uh, I also want to pray for the uh, community service uh, meetings on March 21st. Our brother team is going to give a talk regarding pen, pen, painting, pen, the use of pen and all the tools. Uh, Lord, please shine on him and attract more people. You know, besides the serving the communities, we want them to know you. Please let them see the beauty of you through him. And uh, give him the wisdom, give him the love, give him the strength. Uh, to get this meeting, I'm able to glorify your name. Uh, Lord, we entrust you, even though we are, we are just uh, doing the service through Zoom, but we know that your spirit is with us, okay? with, with each one of us. Please continue to be with us, reside us, reside in us. Uh, we will recite your Lord's your prayer, Lord's prayer now. Unity Amen. Now we have the open open worship. Oh, we have authority to worship. I'm sorry. Uh, Amy, would you play the music? Next, we have the open worship. Uh, this 
Okay, it's a broader marketing. It is really for everybody. Okay? So, anybody want to? Are you are touched by the Holy Spirit. You have something you want to share? Please uh, step up and uh, just uh, unmute yourself and say what is what is uh, what is in your mind, in your heart. Thank you, everybody. Happened miracle to my brother and. Uh, is home right now. Even have a very <laughs> big miracle happen to him. He can do he all his best that take uh, uh, all the dinner by himself because we think uh, when he uh, in the hospital for one month and the serious couple surgery will be very. Uh, you know, critical need uh, some help, but actually after come back home, everything miracle happen. Don't need uh, any help. Thank you God for everybody. Pray for him, and uh, especially uh, uh, auntie uh, uh, Rose, and uh, always come call to. Pray with me for my brother. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Miracle, miracle. Yeah, praise the Lord. Okay, uh, let's move on to the uh, next one. Uh, scripture reading. Our scripture reading today is John 14, 1, 3. Okay, John 14, 1, 3. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come back. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Okay. 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 May God bless his own word. Our next pastor's sermon, uh, pastor, the topic, the title is Keep a Heavenly Mindset, Heading for Home. Based on John 14, 11, uh, 1, 3. Pastor? Thank you, Mike. And let's see, we'll go ahead and do this. And good morning, everyone. And again, it's so much fun to work things on Zoom. I am so happy that in two weeks, two weeks, we're going to gather back into the sanctuary. The only thing is, is that when we do that, then we don't have uh, Strong and PMA as a part of the service. I mean, they can watch the service and see it, but this way we get to see them participate. Uh, so there are some nice things about Zoom that brings us together. But I'll tell you, when it comes to, uh, to this part here, uh, speaking to you, talking to you, delivering a sermon, 
it's a lot different doing it on Zoom. I uh, and when I look at your faces across the across the screen, then um, I'm not looking at the camera. When I look at the camera, it looks like I'm looking at you, but now I'm not. I'm looking at the camera. When I look at the screen, it looks like I'm looking away. Anyway, we started last week. Uh, we talked about set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. And so, it, and of course, that's talking, we talked last week, that's talking about having a, a positive mindset. <laughs> Teresa's helping move the mouse so I don't have that right in front of my face. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's like, it looks like if, if the mouse is there, it looks like I'm picking my nose. And that's not good. No, Teresa said, no, it doesn't. She wishes I wouldn't say things like that. Anyway, let's see, where was I? I don't know. It's like uh, ADD. Oh, setting my mind. Yeah, see, it's hard for me to set my mind on anything. But we're supposed to have a positive mindset. That's the idea. Well, if we're going to have a positive mindset, one of the things we're going to be thinking about is not on earthly things. So what is not on earthly things? On heavenly things. Thinking about our home in heaven. That's kind of a good thing to think about. So for the next several weeks, we're going to be doing a series of sermons primarily from the book of Revelation, which should be a lot of fun. Pray for me and for all of us that God might reveal himself to us. Um, here a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, at my mother's and we, I was looking at some houses around my mother's just to see what houses went for. And I discovered this thing online that realtors do. I don't know, maybe you've seen it. Uh, they will do a virtual tour of a house. It's a 360 tour and you can take your mouse and, and move it and, and you can change the, the way the picture, I mean, you can look up at the ceiling or down at the floor or over to the side. It's wild. You can change floors, you can walk through it. Uh, I noticed that mainly it was high-end houses. I mean, if you're gonna spend three quarter of a million dollars, I guess you can spend a little money on a program to let you walk through a house like that. Well, in the passage that Mike just read, we know that Jesus said, I'm going away and I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you might be also. And we haven't seen the place. Jesus is preparing it and he's going to bring us there as his bride, the church, the bride of Christ. He's going to bring us into it, the home he's preparing for us. It's going to be a wonderful thing. In Revelation, the book of Revelation is given to reveal Jesus and his plan. So Jesus is preparing a place for us, and he gave John a virtual tour of the home, our home in heaven. He gave him a vision and showed him a picture, not only of the things that are going to come, but also in the home that we're going to inhabit. The revelation from Jesus, and this is what it says in Revelation 1.1, the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John, that Jesus said, this is my revelation to you, and I'm making it known to John He's sending his angel to John, and John then wrote it down so that we would have it. So we have this picture. Now, many times, I mean, most people think, oh, I don't know if I can read the book of Revelation. It's so weird. It's so strange. There's dragons and, and monsters and beasts and, and fire from heaven and all of this stuff, all of these symbols. Well, Revelation's rich in symbolism and imagery, but it's given to us so that we might understand. That's what revelation means, right? I'm going to reveal something. In the Greek, the word is apocalyptus or something like that. Anyway, we get the word apocalypse. Now, in our time, apocalypse means catastrophe or bad, the coming destruction of the world. But literally, from Greek, it means the unveiling or the revealing. Originally, it didn't mean 
catastrophe, but unveiling. Listen to this from Revelation 4, verses 1 and 2. John says, after this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. The door opened to heaven. And the voice I heard first speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. So John is invited to come up into heaven. And he says, at once, I was in the spirit. That's why I call it a virtual tour. John hadn't been to heaven yet, but in the spirit he went. And he says, and there before me was a throne in heaven and someone sitting on it. Now, there's a whole lot in Revelation. We're not going to, in this series, look at all the things of Revelation, but we're going to think about our heavenly home and, and what's coming and what Jesus is telling us. It's rich in symbols and imagery. There are many things we don't understand, and there's lots of debate about the interpretations. But anyone can understand the main ideas in Revelation by just reading through the book. So what I would encourage you to look at the book of Revelation, not as a puzzle to be solved, but as a picture book that reveals God's plan. It's interesting, children reading Revelation get it quicker than adults do because they see the pictures. And of course, the main idea of Revelation is really simple. Jesus wins. <laughs> in the end, Jesus wins. And it shows us that God is in control. So we can understand it by just reading through it. And we're told, blessed are those, he who reads this book and those who hear and those who take to heart what is written here. So we should do that. So back to the tour, <laughs> back to the tour that John gets from Jesus. Jesus shows him all kinds of things regarding the judgment of the world. And then in chapter 21, we get a description of our new home. Can you imagine like if, if you were moving someplace and, and one spouse went on ahead to get the home and then they call back and say, okay, here's the home, Teresa, this home, it has, and I want to look at Teresa, but if I do that, I'm looking away from you. This home has that fireplace you wished you had in her old house. It has this, he would be telling all the features of the new home. Oh, honey, you're going to love this home. It's great. And maybe take some pictures and send it. So Jesus shows John the things regarding the judgment. And then here he shows the new home. In Revelation 21.1, John says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. There's been all of this judgment and, and God's wrath poured out upon the earth and all kinds of destruction. And, and basically, God gets gives people a chance to see a little bit more of what hell is like so that they can turn toward him and not experience hell. It literally, in the judgment, becomes a bit of hell on earth as the wrath of God is released and people get the kind of things that they were asking for. He says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. So this new heaven and this new earth, we're told, is radically different from the earth that we now inhabit. Most of John, radically different, but there's a continuity with this present world. It's not, it's not completely different, but it's different enough that it's hard to explain. That, that the gift of God is indescribable. <laughs> Now that talks about his love, that we might know this love that's beyond description, but it also talks about heaven. So it's hard to describe what heaven's like because it's new, it's different. It's like this, we hear, and it's like that. So it's saying these different things that, that heaven is like this, but it doesn't say exactly what it is because how do you describe what you've never seen before? and nobody else has ever seen. Interestingly, then, most of what John explains about our new home is what is not in heaven. 
And there's five negatives that we want to look at today. There's five negatives about heaven. And these five negatives make heaven a very positive place. In Revelation 21, 1 through 3, we'll read that first verse again and then keep going. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among people, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. <laughs> wow. He's saying this new Jerusalem is coming down out of heaven. And then is saying the dwelling place of God is with the people and he will dwell with them. He will be our God. We will be his people. So you would expect then, since the dwelling place of God is coming and this new earth and this new heaven has this new Jerusalem, you would expect it would have the most fabulous temple that has ever been seen. I know when Mike was sharing his salvation story, he talked about living next to a temple and sneaking over there as a kid and looking into the temple wondering what was going on in there. In different temples, you see the ideas that make the temples beautiful and ornate. And some temples are very much so, others not. You would think that this temple would be so much more fantastic than the Temple of Solomon, or later Herod's development of the second temple. But you know what we're told? We're told that there is no temple. Revelation 21, 22, John says, I did not see a temple in the city. So there's no temple. You would expect there to be one, but there's not. He goes on to say, why? Because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. In other words, there's no place. Temples, God can't dwell in a temple anyway. Solomon understood that when he dedicated the temple. He said, are you going to live here? Heaven can't contain you. You can't live in a temple. And the dwelling place of God, God dwelling with us, means that there is no need of a temple. In John chapter 4, Jesus was talking to this lady. She'd come out to draw water at the well. We call her the woman at the well because we don't know her name. And she'd ask him, oh, you Jews say we should worship in Jerusalem, and we Samaritans say you should work, worship over here on this mountain. Uh, which should it be? And Jesus answered in John chapter 24, verses 23 and 24. Yet the time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. So William Barclay says, even now, buildings, liturgy, government, or ministry do not make the church. The real presence of God does. Early Quakers would never call the building they met in a church. Because we are the church. We are the dwelling place of God on earth now. Those are meeting places. So we would go to the meeting place. When I first understood some of these things, I didn't ever want to call the building a church. I'll meet you at the meeting place. People are going, where? What? Finally, I gave up and I gave into our, our culture and I call it the church, the church building or something. But I like a lot of a lot of old Church of Christ. They would have a sign out front that says, the Church of Christ meets here. See, we are the church. And there it's even more so. In the New Jerusalem, we are face to face with God. There is no temple because he is the temple. God and the Lamb are its temple. And again, see the equation of Jesus 
with God the Father. Jesus is God. Now, this new Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven, we're told some things about it. We're given some, some things, and we're not going to go into all of that today because I want to talk about what's not in heaven. But this new Jerusalem is measured out, and it is a perfect cube. It's as tall as it is wide as it is deep. You know what else is a perfect cube? The Holy of Holies in the temple of God. This is the place where the Ark of the Covenant sat. This was the place that represented the very presence of God, God's glorious presence. So the new Jerusalem, the dwelling place, our new home is the Holy of Holies. There is no temple. We are there directly in God's place. Secondly, we're told that in this home that we're heading for, there is no darkness. Now, I haven't lived way, way north of uh, the Arctic Circle. If you get way north, you can get there, and they call it the land of the midnight sun because the sun shines. But you know what? That happens part of the year. The other part of the year, what is it? The sun doesn't shine at all. It's either pointing toward the sun or it's not. You either have total light or total darkness or in between. But here we're told in Revelation 21, 23 through 25, the city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it for the glory of God gives it light and the lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there is no night there. In Revelation 22, 5, it continues. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun for the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. John is so impressed with this idea, this fact that there is no night there, that there is no darkness, that he mentions it four times. He states it four times. In verse uh, 23, he says, there's no need of the sun or the moon. And then in verse 22, 5, he says, there's no more night, 25 21, 25, no more night. 25, 22, 5, no more night. And again, not we don't need the lamp or the moon or anything like that. All of these things, we're told that God is the light in this new world. It's going to be different. It's bright. There's no darkness. Listen to what Jesus said about himself in John chapter 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, we're told, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. He goes on in verse 7 and says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. When we're in heaven, we will be in the very presence of God, and the glory of God, the brightness of God, illuminates our lives and the entire world, because God is its light, and Jesus is its lamp. We won't need it any other light. Then in that passage, it also says that the gates never close. Now, in, in the old world, you know, and even some parts of the world today, but especially in the old times, in Jesus' day, in John's day, cities were forts. They had walls and they had gates, and at night, they shut the gates to keep out all the problems so nobody could sneak in. You had gatekeepers. They were there seeing who was going to come and go and not let anybody in that was going to be a problem. So you shut the gates at night. 
But these gates in the new city, in the new Jerusalem, they never close. Revelation 21, 25, we just read it. Let's look at it again. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. See, normally we'd say the gates are not shut day or night. But John couldn't say that because in the new Jerusalem, there's no darkness. There's no night. And so he says, hey, those gates never shut any day. Oh, and because there's no night, so they never shut. Why? Because there's no need to shut them because the city lives in perfect security. You know, I walk around all the time and uh, I got these things. I got some, one in my car, one in my house, one to the church, you know, and, and sometimes I've gotten someplace, it's like, oh, I forgot my keys. Or you get outside the car. I am so glad that now if the keys in the ignition, my car says, hey, silly. I think it's probably stronger. Hey, stupid. You left your keys in here. Beep, 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 beep. Come back and get them. But there's been a few times I've pulled them out of the ignition and set them in my lap and did something else and then got out, locked the door and looked back in. And there's my keys sitting on the, on the chair. So I got to call somebody. Bring me keys or call AAA to help me get in. In heaven, we won't need any keys. <laughs> there won't be any locks. The gates don't need to be shut. We don't have anything to worry about. Why do we lock stuff? Well, sometimes to protect ourselves. I don't want anybody coming in and messing with me. Other times it's to protect our stuff, right? So store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, we said last week. Where, where moth and rust don't corrupt and thieves can't break in and steal. But here they can, so we've got locks. In heaven, no need for locks, no keys. I like that idea. And there's nothing, with the gates being open all the time, there's nothing to keep us from God. In John chapter 10, Jesus said, I am the gate of the sheep. He is the way in and out. He gives us access, just like we just looked, into the very presence of God, into the light of life, and that eternal life starts even right now. On Matthew 27, 51, Matthew tells us, at the moment that Jesus died, at that moment the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. When Jesus died, he ripped the temple's curtain, the veil that kept anyone from going into the Holy of Holies, into the presence of God, from the presence of God was blocked from all of us. The high priest could only go in and then only once a year and with very, very careful preparation. And when Jesus died, he ripped the veil from the top to the bottom, showing that now we have access with God. So in the new Jerusalem, in our new home, the doors, the gates, they're never shut. We come in to be with the Lord. Then in Revelation, we, in Revelation 21, 27, it says, Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So we're told that the next negative that we're looking at is that nothing impure can enter. Nothing. The gates don't need to be shut because there's nothing impure that's ever going to enter this new Jerusalem, our heavenly home. Nothing that causes problems. None of the things that make life on earth a living hell will be present. There's nothing there that's going to offend. So there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more death. All of those things, nothing that would upset the pure holiness and love of God is allowed in. Paul catches this same concept 
in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. Listen to these words. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? See, it says nothing impure will enter, nor anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful. He says, do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, here's a key. If nothing that's impure is going to enter into heaven, how are you and I going to get in? Because you know, you know your own heart. You know your own life. You look back in your life and you are not pure. You cannot earn your way into heaven. You cannot cleanse yourself from the sin that you have participated in. That's why this is the whole point that Paul was making. Verse 11, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, verse 11, he says, and that's what some of you were. He's writing to Christians. He's writing to the people who were talking about, this is our home. He's saying, and that's what some of you were. Some were swindlers. Some were thieves. Some were drunkards. Some had sex with other men. Some, some were doing this. Some were doing that. Drunkards, slanderers, swindlers. All of those people, they won't inherit the kingdom of God. That's what some of you were. But, key word, but... You were washed. You were sanctified. In other words, set apart. You were justified. That means forgiven in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. We have been changed and we have been made new in Christ. And he has paid the penalty of our sin so that we can enter through the gates of heaven. We can come into this new home. If you haven't been cleansed, by the blood of Jesus, you can't come into this house. Nothing impure will ever enter. I've, I've done a thing for kids before and, you know, in the little uh, short messages. If you take a glass of very, very pure water, it's a nice water. And it's, oh, it's, would you like a glass of nice water? Oh, sure. That sounds good. You pour it out of a bottle to show that it's pure, you know. And then you take an eyedropper of swamp water with stuff swimming around in it, all that kind of stuff. You know, the kind of things that will make you want to, you know, we used to call it the backdoor trots. You figure that out for yourself what that means. You take, you take this eyedropper full of scum, swamp water, and you take and you drop two drops into this nice big glass of clean water. Say, so you want to drink of that now? Not me. If God takes us the way we are into heaven, heaven's no longer heaven. Heaven's not perfect. But he said through his blood that he has forgiven us and Jesus paid the penalty and we are made clean in him so that we can go in not by righteous deeds, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of renewal, of washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit. There's one last one, one last negative that we want to look at today. Number five, there is no curse. Revelation 22.3. And this is so important. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. Way back in the beginning of the Bible, Genesis chapter 3, we're told that Adam and Eve had disobeyed God. And in Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, God, as a result of Adam's sin, he said to Adam, because you listened to your wife and ate the fruit from the tree which I commanded you not to eat, cursed is the ground because of you. 
Through painful toil, you will eat the food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For, for from dust you are, for dust you are, and to the dust you will return. That when Adam sinned against God, death entered the world, and the ground itself, the earth itself, was cursed. And this earth, as you've heard me say it many times, this earth created by God, wonderful, beautiful, but this earth is broken. It's broken by sin. But the day is coming when we'll have a new earth, a new heaven and a new earth, for the old is passing away. Revelation, I mean, Romans 8, 9, 19 and 22 says, For creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from the bondage to decay and brought into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Even all of creation longs for the day of the redemption of the children of God. And the reason there's no more curse for us, we see it in Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 to 14. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole or a tree. His rede he redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. So by faith, we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Jesus took the curse for you and me. And the curse has been wiped out because of the cross. And now instead of the curses, we have the blessings. All the blessings that are ours in Christ in the heavenly realms that we talked about last week. So heaven, we're told... Five negative things about heaven that make heaven a very, very positive place. Are you tired? Have all life's problems got you down? Sometimes you feel like, I don't know if I can make it to the end. Maybe want to give up. Hang in there. That's the message of Revelation. Don't give up. Persevere. We'll be talking about that in future weeks. Hang in there. Don't lose heart. The revelation that Jesus gave to John is there to encourage us. This life, with all of its problems, it is going to pass. Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust me. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'm going to come back and get you so that you also may be where I am and we'll be together with the Lord forever. This new heavenly home is a place with no sin, nothing to offend God, nothing to cause the problems of sorrow and pain and ugliness. No sorrow, no death, no parting. And best of all, no separation between us and God and us and one another. United in the full presence of God. Experience the full glory of God. Surrounded by the powerful love of God. Our lives filled with joy and praise and love and peace. Peace in the idea of, of being on fullness, wholeness. The home that Jesus is preparing for us is wonderful beyond description. Not only because of what's not there, but because he is there. Make sure that you are there. 
John tells us in 1 John 5, 11 and 12. And this is the testimony. God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. And he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you might know you have eternal life. I hope today you know that you have eternal life, that you have the Son, that you've said yes to Jesus. Come and cleanse me so that I can be with you forever in the home that you're preparing for your people. Father, you know each of our hearts, you know our needs. Pray that you'd encourage each one, that you'd help us to remember that this life, this world, these bodies, everything we have here, this is not our permanent home, but that we live in the tent and the day is coming when we'll live with you. We pray, Father, for that one who has not yet experienced the fullness of life in Christ, that you would draw them to yourself, that they might know your great love for them and that they would embrace you with all that they are. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can you help me? So for our response song today, we're going to sing When We All Get to Heaven. You can sing along, just make sure you're muted, because otherwise it doesn't work very well. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty we'll behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. May you walk in the light as he is in the light. And may the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanse you from all sin. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Hey, Mike. Yep. Thank you, Pastor, uh, for uh, this new series.
Okay, in from Revelation, that's really we all need to hear it. Okay, <laughs> so we can be encouraged. Okay, now I don't think that we have any newcomers, but welcome everybody who joined us all in this worship. Uh, and then of course we thanks Pastor for the message. And uh, there's a number of items uh, that will be. Uh, I mean, I don't need to enumerate all of them, but uh, one important thing is that uh, March 20, March 20, okay, uh, uh, Brother Tim Chen is going to talk about what paints or coatings to use for your next home. No, you don't be next home. You will be my current home. <laughs> I need to need a, a painting job. Okay? So, when do you have time? Yeah. What? what time? Uh, either in the bulletin, okay, in Mar March 20, 2021, Saturday at 1 p.m. Okay. 1 p.m. It's on, on the Zoom, okay? It's on the, our bulletin. You, you, you can click and go. And, and also, Tong Xiangwei also has made announcements in the, I mean. Uh, it's also, 20, not 21. 20, not 21. Yeah, 20, right. I think in the bulletin, it's a 20, yes. That's a Saturday. Saturday. Right. Twenty one is uh is, is Sunday, okay? and uh, twenty one will be our last Sunday on Zoom, and we will resume, go back to to church, on March twenty eighth. That will be the Palm Sun Palm Sun Sunday, okay? and we we in time to prepare for the Easter Sunday the week after. Yeah, so. Uh, and uh, Jean requests that you to send uh, to give him, give him give her a date that you cannot serve for the next quarter. Okay, and the deadline is tomorrow. So, uh, uh, the other one, yeah, I think there's a number of prayer items. I mean, obviously, the uh, there's a list of the the, the people who are sick, and we are glad to hear that the pastor of um, not Donald Trump or uh, Donald Tsai, okay, is uh, is recovering well. Okay, so praise the Lord. And there's number sister sister Teresa's father Eugene, uh, it's, it's probably still doing the rehab, and and uh, a number of others. And also I mentioned about Zhang Xiyao, yeah, the Zhang Xiyao Guo Tianwei. Uh, Let's pray, all pray for God and we. An important thing is for the prayer for the uh, next, for the new pastors. Okay? And uh, I'm waiting for the response from Pastor Chen and the uh, deadline is approaching. Okay? So yeah, let's pray for that. And uh, God will send the best people for to fit our church needs. Okay? okay, is there anything else anybody want to say and uh, maybe share? Uh, if not, then we will have the music and conclude our meeting today. Thank everyone for being here. We'll continue to have the Zoom meeting on. 
we'll say goodbye to those that are on Facebook and hope to see you on Zoom again next week. And then uh, at the building, at the meeting place, okay, at the church next week, I mean, on the 28th for Palm Sunday, and uh, we will continue to uh, put that live on Facebook also. So it's time for people just to hang out and share, or if you need to go, you're, you're able to go. We're just glad that you're all here. And uh, remember, if you're e gonna share, you've been muted, so you'll have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah, please unmute yourself okay, if you wanna share. I'm gonna share something for you to think about. People 